Welcome to your Destiny Moments service today. Now this month I want to focus on the issue of deliverance that comes from the Lord. Now for many people the topic of deliverance can be controversial. But I want you to know today that the whole of God's kingdom is all about deliverance. And that's why in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 to verse 14 it says that for he has delivered us from the kingdom of darkness. Another version says, he has rescued us from the dominion of the powers of darkness. And he has translated us into the kingdom of the son that he loves. So from that scripture alone, we can understand that there are two kingdoms. And you belong to one or the other. You cannot belong to both God's kingdom and the devil's kingdom. You are either in God's kingdom or in the devil's kingdom. Now listen, when Jesus Christ was teaching his disciples how to pray, listen to the book of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. In this manner, therefore, pray our Father in heaven. First of all, the effectiveness of your prayer has to be based on your relationship with God. So if you're going to be effective and to live a life that, fulfill, that is fulfilled, a life that is full of fruitfulness, you must strengthen your relationship with God. There has to be a father-son, father-daughter kind of relationship. And so that is the foundation of the effectiveness of our praying. But now listen, he goes on to say, hallowed be thy name. Now in this prayer alone, there are six things that are key in our lives. One, hallowed be thy name. In other words, for you to be effective in your praying, you have to honor God. Secondly, it talks about your kingdom come. We pray that his kingdom comes and then your will be done on earth. Now these three things are all directed or connected to God directly. The three other things that are very important to us in that very same prayer, it is give us this day our daily bread. In other words, God is committed to sustain you on a daily basis. It's not all about bread and food. It talks about your daily needs. And your need today could be healing. It could be deliverance. It could be finances. It could be whatever it is. God is committed to your daily sustenance. The second need that we have is forgive us our sins even as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lastly, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Now, when it comes to the issue of deliverance, the word deliverance is brought to us in the Bible in three, sent three tenses. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, in verse 10, the Bible says, He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. Now listen to the three tenses. He delivered us, he delivers us, he will deliver us. Now let me say this. Jesus Christ in his own ministry believed in the existence of the powers of, of the power of the devil. That's why in the book of John 8, 44, he preached about Satan as a deceiver, as a liar, and as a murderer. In John 10, 10, Jesus Christ said, A thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the thief was referring to the devil's work. In the book of Matthew chapter 4, Jesus had been on the mountain in prayer and fasting for 40 days. And the devil came and brought in temptations. Now listen, Jesus comes back from the mountain where he had been praying and fasting, tempted every day. He had overcome the devil in all those tempt temptations by saying, it is written. He enters the congregation and listens to the very first words that came from the mouth of Jesus. In the book of Luke, chapter 4, Listen to verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me, one, to preach the gospel to the poor. 
He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recover of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed. Now listen, in this couple of verses, the word liberty appears twice. For me, it is an emphasis that one of the major assignments of Jesus Christ when he came from heaven, it was to preach the gospel. Through the preached word, we can receive faith for salvation. And then secondly, it was to set at liberty those that are captives. Jesus here was quoting from the book of Isaiah 51 and also Isaiah 58. His purpose on coming was to set at liberty those that were captives. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 12, verses 26 and verse 28, listen to this. Jesus Christ is teaching again. If Satan casts out Satan, he is divided against himself. And how then will his kingdom stand? So Jesus recognized that the devil had a kingdom. Listen to verse 28. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. So Christ recognizes two kingdoms, his own kingdom and then the kingdom of the devil. When Jesus Christ appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus in the book of Acts chapter 9, but also Acts 26 and verse 18, the mission of Paul given to him by Christ was to go and get people from the dominion of Satan into the kingdom of God. Now, demonic powers will influence people's minds. Once the minds have been influenced, then their actions are going to be influenced. And then even their talking is going to be influenced. Many people today are influenced by demonic powers. Some do know it and some do not even know. But I'm going to be looking at a few things that can help you to spot where there is a demonic power influencing your life. Because I know by God's grace that God wants to stretch his hand upon your life and upon all that concern you to bring deliverance into your life. Now what is deliverance? Deliverance means setting someone free from demonic powers. In the book of John 8.32, Jesus Christ himself said that you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. It is possible to live a life that is totally free from demonic influences. But as I've already told you from the Bible, deliverance happens in three tenses in the Bible. He delivered us, he delivers us, and he will deliver us. Now what does the devil do when he's given an opportunity to come into our lives. Number one, the devil can choke your potential in life. Read the book of Mark. Mark chapter 5 and verse 20 talks about a man who had been demon possessed, would not know for how long, but after deliverance, he went in 10 cities and he evangelized all of them. But when you read the very first verses, first five verses in Mark chapter 5. You see how the devil had taken over the life of this man. This man lacked self-control. This man had an unnatural destructive strength. This man lived in isolation. This man lived a restless life. This man walked naked. This man had self-affliction. Every day they could hear him screaming at the top of his voice and was cutting himself with stones and the man was bleeding, living in a graveyard. The devil had choked his potential until Jesus Christ showed up. And then in verse 20 we see that generational testimony of the ministry of this man that had been mad. That's what, that's what the devil wants to do in anyone's life. To choke your potential. The devil destroys marriages. Let me put it this way. Evil influences or powers will influence and control the minds of individuals, bringing sickness, torment of the mind, undesirable behavior, inability to function normally, and to even commit suicide. 
And as a result of these demonic powers, many people have become a danger to themselves and also a danger to others. You watch the news today and you see people that are doing horrible things against themselves and against each other. The book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says this, For we struggle not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. In other words, as you're pursuing your destiny, you're going to be contended against by demonic powers. How do devils come to influence man and, and, woman, and women? The devil has no control over your life until he finds an open door in your life and enters your life. In the Old Testament, there was a king by the name of Saul. He lived a glorious life at the beginning, anointed and overcoming battle after battle because God was with him. But the moment King Saul began to be rebellious against God, the Bible said that an evil spirit began to come and distress him. So it was Saul who opened a door for this demonic power that came and tormented him. And actually Saul went so far in the demonic world that he began to consult with doctors. What are the entry points of these demonic powers? I want to quote for you a scripture in the book of Galatians, chapter 5, from verse 19. The acts of the flesh are obvious. I personally believe that the acts of the flesh, once indulged in without repentance, will become open doors for demons to come and torment your life. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, and orgies, and the like. The devil's number one strategy is to keep you away from going to heaven. What are some of the marks that you can look at and spot a demonic power influencing your life? I know that we have a very short time, but you can go to our Facebook page where I've done much of this teaching in the church. And I know that your life will not be the same. But let me go quickly through a few things that you can look at and you know a demonic power is trying to torment your life. Demonic powers will try to attack you in your dreams. The devil is against your peace. Dreams like sexual dreams, eating in the dreams, seeing the dead calling you to join them or to visit them, all these are examples of demonic activity, activities trying to infiltrate your sleep. Matthew 13, 25. But while everyone was sleeping, an enemy came and sowed weeds. Now the only way to live a life that is totally free from demonic powers every day is to have Jesus Christ as the Lord and the Savior of your life. Once you accept him, he becomes your shield from the powers of darkness. Oh, glory to God. Now, I want to pray for you right now, but the, my very first prayer for you is that you accept Jesus Christ to be the Lord and the Savior of your life. Because once you are born again, then you will begin to terrorize the works of the devil that have been terrorizing your life. If you want to be born again today, and you are saying, Pastor, pray for me. I want Jesus to be the Savior of my life and to deliver me. Say these words after me. Lord Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I commit my life to you. And I pray that you'll forgive my every sin. And from today, you are the Lord and the Savior of my life. Amen. Father God, I thank you so much because of everybody that is watching this program. And as they, have lived, uh, they are living a life of faith, I pray, wherever they have been bound, let bondages be broken today. Emotional bondages, mental bondages, physical, financial, relational bondages, let, the all, let, let them all be broken from your life from today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you so much. Thank you for watching and I'm praying for you.